Today we're at the intersection of Broad, Wall, and Nassau Street. We're in front of the, one of the most important historic sites in all of New York City. Look, there's George Washington. And that is because this is where George Washington took the oath of office as the first president of the United States of America, right here in this spot. But long before Washington took that oath, other things happened on this site to lay the groundwork for our United States Constitution, some as long as 50 years before that date. So let's take a look inside and see what we can find out about Federal Hall National Memorial. We're entering through the rear door on Pine Street and we'll take the first left into this first gallery we see here. And to the left of the gallery, we see an old printing press reminiscent of the 1700s. And this is to commemorate an event that occurred here in 1735, the trial of John Peter Zenger. At the time of Mr. Zenger's trial, the building on this site was the City Hall. And this is a replica of that early City Hall building. As the City Hall, it's where our City Council met, or our Common Council it was called, the New York Assembly met, and there were courtrooms and jails. So this really was the center of civic activity for colonial New York City. Mr. Zenger's problems started with his newspaper, the New York Weekly Journal, which he put out, as the name suggests, weekly. And in the Weekly Journal, he ran a number of articles critical of the New York Royal Governor Cosby, his friends, his appointees, and corruption that was occurring within the Royal Administration here in New York. Needless to say, this made Governor Cosby extremely angry. He ordered the arrest of John Zanger and for every copy of the newspaper other than those used for evidence to be burned on Wall Street. Mr. Zenger's trial lasted for nine months, and at the end of the nine months, the jury found him not guilty of the charge, seditious libel, because they said that what he printed was true, and if it was true, it could not be a libel. They also rewrote the libel law in New York to reflect that a libel was only a libel if a printer knowingly printed a falsehood, and this changed the rules of the free press in New York for all time. So in 1735, here on this spot, the old city hall, the trial of John Zanger brought us the free press later in the First Amendment of the United States Constitution. Thirty years after the Zanger trial in 1765, the first ever Congress of the American Colonies was held on the same site in the same city hall. You might remember the Stamp Act. That was when Britain taxed all use of paper in the American colonies. The colonists got extremely upset, protested, and formed a Congress here in New York to talk about opposing the Stamp Act. And it was the very first time the colonies ever united against England. Now, it didn't really lead to anything big, except it did lay the groundwork for the next Congress, which would be the Continental Congress in Philadelphia. So right here, the first ever Congress of the Colonies, the Stamp Act Congress in 1765. The next model we see is the Federal Hall, as it looked the day Washington took the oath of office, April 30th, 1789. Now this is that City Hall building after being renovated to become the Federal Hall. And if you don't already know, New York was the first capital city of the United States of America. A woman standing on a balcony in a home to the right of this building said that the crowd was so dense it looked like she could step off of her balcony and walk across the heads of the people. Anybody who was anyone was here to see President Washington take that very first oath of office. Now elsewhere in the building they have some things from that original federal hall that they've preserved so let's take a walk out into the rotunda and see them. If we go back out into the hall and turn left we walk out into the rotunda where we find the actual balcony that George Washington stood on when he took the oath of office. It's right here to our left with a crack in it as apparently it was once dropped and broken sometime along the way, but they still have it on display for everyone to see. One of the questions people ask me all the time when they see it is, is this the whole balcony? Because it's really quite small. And when we look at paintings of the inauguration like this one, which is on display here in the museum, 
it looks like an enormous balcony but when we look at original prints from the time we can see that this small stone piece here in front of us is the actual balcony in the side gallery until recently the Bible used in Washington's inauguration was on display. It has since been moved to the New York Historical Society, but I was able to take some pictures of it while it was still here a few years ago. The Bible belongs to the New York Freemasons, and they have moved it to the New York Historical Society. I think they moved it while the Federal Hall was under renovations and closed. Today there is a display explaining about the Bible with some photos of it. Next to the Bible is the original railing from that balcony, an iron railing, handmade, you can see it's handmade, and would have been done by some of the finest artisans available in New York in 1789. Since we were unable to see the entrance of the building because of all the scaffolding that's up for repairs that are being done, let's take a look at the model that's on display in that gallery room we first entered. And you can see from the model that the entrance to the building is built to look like the Parthenon at Athens. Now let's take a walk out onto the rotunda and look up and we'll see a dome that represents the Pantheon of Rome. When this building was built in 1841, and it was built as a customs house, more about that in a moment, it was meant to reflect the great democracy of Athens and Republic of Rome upon which our own constitution was based. So the outside of the building looks like the Parthenon and the inside the Pantheon. A moment ago I mentioned that this building was built as a customs house. Well, what's a customs house? A customs house is where you pay customs or taxes on imports and exports entering through the port. Here are a few views of the locks on the doors to the vaults that were in use when this was a customs house, and a view of the floor of the customs house from the balcony from about five years ago when they had a display of these American flags. When New York commissioned this building, it was decided that all materials, all companies participating, and all artisans that worked on it would be all from the state of New York. There is one exception though. Even though all of the stone you're looking at here is from New York, all of that iron work was done by a New York company. As we go up and look at the tops of the columns, you can see the Corinthian caps on the columns. Those are the only piece of the building not made in New York. Those were made in Italy, carved there, shipped here, and installed on the caps of the columns. But otherwise, all of the other beautiful work you see here, including the floor, all of the marble, all of the limestone, everything is from New York. Let's take a walk up to the balcony and you can see this beautiful railing on the steps going both upstairs and downstairs. And when we get to the balcony, we have an opportunity to see that ironwork up close. And we can see all of the beautiful details in the dresses, the braided hair, the floral work, all very beautifully done. And of course, we're right next to that clock that we saw before that's over the entrance. Oh, and we can't forget those Corinthian caps. They're right in front of us as we stand here. And again, there's the eagle that marks the main entrance. Let's head down to the basement to see what supports that magnificent old floor of the Customs House. When we get down here, we find more columns. Shorter, sturdier, columns, but still columns holding up the main trading floor. Mm -hmm. Also, if you're visiting, the restrooms are on this lower floor of the building. Now there's much more to know about this building, so if you're visiting New York City, please stop in and take a look at the exhibits and learn about this great historic site. Better yet, if you're visiting New York City, you can hire me as a guide and I'll take you through Federal Hall National Memorial and I'll take you all around the Wall Street area and point out the landmarks that are important to our nation's founding, our city's founding, and our state's founding. I hope you enjoyed the tour. Please subscribe to my channel for more like this and please, while you're watching, hit the like button. I'll see you next time.